Hello everyone, Garnetto here, and today I am bringing you a breakdown of what I think are 10 things you may have missed from Series 2, Episode 1, Leo's Your Academy, Part 1 of Series Unfortunate Events, Series 2. If you haven't seen Series 2 yet, so let's get started. It's actually been a while since my channel's actually had proper uploads, so to apologise for that, let's start off with a hiatus joke, which Series Unfortunate Events decides to do as well. We've been sitting on this bench for months. We've been waiting so long, Sunny's starting to look less like a baby and more like a toddler. This is, of course, poking fun at itself and the fact that there has been quite a while since the last episode. They had a six month gap in filming and over a year between episodes. They also use this line to very cleverly explain why Sunny is suddenly a lot older. One of my favourite things about Easter egg hunting in the show is that it can be anywhere. Even this boring scene in a bank that's purely there for exposition, we've got Easter eggs. For example, Mr. Poe is describing a book that he is currently reading and cannot put down. When he lifts it up, you can see the cover. The Pony Party, and I can't put it down. The book Mr. Poe is reading is The Pony Party, which apparently exists in the TV series but doesn't exist in real life. What it actually is, is a reverse cover for Lemony Snicket's The Unauthorised Biography. You're supposed to use it to disguise what you're actually reading so that passerbys won't know that you're reading The Unauthorised Autobiography. As a bonus fact for you all, the book is written by Loney M. Setnik, which is an anagram of Lemony Snicket. What's more is that the cover is actually designed after the American cover of the series Unfortunate Events series. In other countries we have different designs, I know in England we have a very different design to this. So although Americans might already know this instantly, I imagine there'll be quite a few from other countries that didn't actually realise this. That's not the only Easter egg in Mr. Poe's office, as he is actually speaking on the phone with his boss Mr. Tamerlane. Mr. Tamerlane is voiced by the show's director and producer Barry Sonnenfeld. Ah oh, yes, the little layers. And that's not the only time that Barry Sonnenfeld appears in this episode. Later on in the episode, there is a screen where the Baudelaire's are in the Vice Principal Nero's office, and on the wall is a portrait of the school's founder, Barry Morfaint. Founder. So Barry Morfaint. The portrait of Barry Morfaint is actually a picture of Barry Sonnenfeld. Whilst we're in Nero's office, we might as well have a closer look at the Orphan Shack brochure. The pamphlet reads, The Orphan Shack, a small tin shack with no living room, no games room, and nothing even resembling a single tropical bird. The shack is equipped with bales of hay to sleep on, but no fruit. It's a dismal place. This is incredibly similar to the way that Nero describes it in the book. The main difference being that instead of no lending library, there's no tropical birds due to the fact that the library has a much larger part in the Netflix series. The names of the teachers at the school have hidden meanings in them as well. You will be studying with Mr. Rivora in room one, and Klaus, you will be with Mrs. Bass in room two. Which Bass and Rivora are both types of fish. Then we also have the gym teacher, Miss Tench, who is also named after a type of fish. A group of fish is called a school, so it's very appropriate that all the teachers are named after fish. Now for an apples based fact. In the cafeteria, there are some vile looking apples. Worry about the apples, they taste like horseradish. Everything seems. This line is both a call back and a call forward. Better apples and horseradish will be an important factor later on. However, it's also a call back to the reptile room. Algae Lane is perhaps the most unpleasant lane in the world. It runs past an orchard of trees which once produced apples so sour one only had to look at them to feel ill. And it encircles a horseradish factory so the entire area smells bitter and strong. There's also another fantastic reference from the librarian. I know. In every library, there is a single book to answer the question that burns like a fire in the mind. This is a quote from the book Who Could That Be at This Hour from the Old One Questions series, in which it is advice given to a teenage Lemony Snicket by the librarian Dashiell Qwerty. This isn't the first time it's been referenced, as it was also referenced in The Miserable Mill in series one. In every library, there is a single book that can answer the question that burns like a fire in the mind. Now for one of my favourite references. I think most 90s kids would have gotten this one, but I've got to include it on the list anyway. It is this exchange between Larry and Carmelita. What you really, really want. Oh, I'll tell you what I want. What I really, really want. Those lines are a reference to a Spice Girl song from back in the 90s, wannabe. Really, really 
and, and yes, of, of course I downloaded that purely for this video, no other purpose. Why do you ask? Now, I'm a massive fan of the TV show How I Met Your Mother. Now, one thing which I find interesting is that there is actually two people who have been in How I Met Your Mother and Series of Unfortunate Events. Obviously, Neil Patrick Harris is Olaf. We also have Kobe Smulder, who played Robin in How I Met Your Mother and played the mother of the Quagmires in Series of Unfortunate Events. Now, what I find quite interesting about this is that it is kind of referenced. When Olaf first meets the Quagmires, he mentions that he knows their mother and goes on about the memory of her, which he then rolls his eyes in disgust at her, the memory of it. I'm just like your mother, Quigley. Duncan. You miscreant. Never again will you darken the doors of this airplane hangar, such a tiresome woman. Oh, we and then finally, we have one last easter egg for this video, which is if you look at the bulletin board that the Quagmires are stood up against, then you will see a nice little post. Not spotted it yet? Let's try zooming in. There's a sign there for Cake Sniffers Anonymous. I have to assume that some people watching this that's relevant for, so that's why I decided to point it out. So that's all the facts that I have for you today. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Tradition to clap and cheer and yell, Bravo! If you want more videos like this, then subscribe. I will be making a lot more of these videos in future. Um, so subscribe, turn on notifications, that way you'll get notified every time I make a new video. Also leave a like if you enjoyed it and comment to let me know which of these you did or didn't know and if there's any interesting ones that you think I missed. Thank you very much. See you next time.